All right, so again, I say good morning to all of you and welcome back, uh, class of 2022. Um, can you believe you're seniors already? It's going to be a great year. And we're looking forward to sharing with you all of the things that are going to make this year special and, um, and fun and memorable. So it's been a while since we've been able to all get together. Uh, you notice that you're not sitting in, you know, different seats with white tape on them, which is kind of exciting. We've got our Madrigal Choir back. This is our, you know, mini Madrigal Choir, but um, we're so excited to have them back. Um, and I just want to remind you all, you know, you're not in a classroom. You're in our auditorium, which when we have mass becomes a sacred space. So this is our church. And so it's very, very, very fitting that we begin your senior year with Mass. And I just want to remind you of a couple of things. First of all, and, um, you know, perhaps most important right now, is I want you all to put your phones away, okay? So put them away, either in a book bag or in a purse or in your pocket or something. Just make sure that they're all away, turned off, you don't have that distraction. Again, this is our church, so during Mass we're going to stand and we're going to sit at the appropriate times, and I have the prayers up on the PowerPoint, so you as seniors, many of you having gone through Catholic school all of your lives, please respond and respond um, enthusiastically. Um, sing, you know these songs, and the lyrics are up on the... Um, are up on the PowerPoint as well. Be a participant in this, um, in this most, most special thing that we do together um, as Catholic school. So um, we're very, very fortunate this morning to have uh, Monsignor Walsh. Monsignor Walsh is retired from, um, oh, I'm gonna forget, is it, is it uh, St. James in Pennington? Is that where we're retired from, Monsignor? He can't hear me. Okay, so he's retired from somewhere, and <laughs> he's going to be with us to say um, Mass this morning. He's wonderful. Deacon Rich is with us. Uh, Jimmy Burrows, our absolutely wonderful choir. I want to remind you uh, that when you go to communion, that uh, communion is for, you know, practicing Catholics. So you're going to leave your rows to your left, and you're going to come to the altar server excuse me, you're going to come to the Eucharistic minister who's, um, you know, there for you. So you're going to exit left. You're going to come to your Eucharistic minister. If you're Catholic, you're going to receive communion. And then you're going to circle around and go back to your seat. Because we don't want you climbing all over each other. Um, if you are not Catholic, we still ask you to get up and come forward. And then as you come to the Eucharistic minister, you can just pass on by. Okay. Is there anything else, Joanna, you wanted me to remind them of? All right, so uh, let's get started with the first Mass of your senior year. Let's stand and welcome Monsignor Walsh.
morning, everyone. May we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. And as God's people, we have gathered this morning at the beginning of this new school year. We thank God for the blessing of one another's presence. We praise God for the blessing of forgiveness there for all of us and its transforming power in all of our lives. May we pause for a moment of reflection. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying, peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not the, of the night or darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. For God did not destine us for wrath, but to gain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, as indeed you do. The word of the Lord. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. I that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus went to Capernaum, a town of Galilee. He taught them on the Sabbath, and they were astonished at his teaching, because he spoke with authority. In the synagogue, there was a man with the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out in a loud voice, What have you done with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the, one, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Be quiet, come out of him. Then a demon threw the man down in front of them and came out of him without doing him any harm. They were all amazed and said to one another, What is there about his word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And news of him spread everywhere in the surrounding region. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, the scriptures every day, I like to sort of pull one thing out of them. And because that's about all I can deal with is one thing. And it's, the scriptures, it's amazing how they always have something to say to us. And lots of times it's very apropos for a particular day. And the last line of this morning's first reading from St. Paul, I think is very apropos, because Paul is telling us, encourage one another, build one another up. And as you begin the school year, and tough times all around you. It's even tough in terms of ourselves and who we're near, what we're near, and what's happening around us. It's tough. So it's important that all of us take on that mission that St. Paul gives us this morning. Encourage one another. That's not just the mission of the principal or the president or the teacher. It's the mission of all of us. Encourage one another. So see that as part of who you are starting this school year and build one another up. You know, we're great for pulling each other down. We're great for noticing something and saying, sticking the knife in the person. But the mission must be to build each other up, to support the effort of the other person, even if it's an effort that we don't maybe consider as good as it should be or as good as it could be. But Paul, remember, is trying to give people a sense of what their mission is as believers. And so these are the two things that he picks up this morning for the people of Thessalonica when he was writing to them and for all of us. Encourage one another. Build one another up. Amen. Confident that the Lord listens to all of our prayer, let us offer these prayers of petition. As we gather to begin this new school year, let us now present our petitions and shared hopes before our God. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Pope Francis, that God grants him good health and the wisdom with which to inspire and guide all people of faith. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the leaders of all nations, 
that they work together to bring an end to all war and govern their people with compassion and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Afghanistan and Haiti who live with ongoing fear, chaos, and struggle, that they may find peace and comfort and help from around the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our students as they look forward to another year of learning, achieving, fun, and friendship, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our teachers, administrators, and staff who challenge students to think and to grow both in knowledge and in faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our families and among our friends who are sick, that they find comfort and healing, and for those who have died, that they are now at eternal peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those intentions that we keep in the silence of our hearts, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for your mission to all of us. Strengthen our resolve to be responsive. Strengthen our sense of commitment to really building one another up and providing constant encouragement for each other. We pray your blessing on all of us. Amen. Our sacrifice be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name. The of the Church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called the chosen race of royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distrust as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be with all of you. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. peace
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter onto my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we ask you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. morning class of uh, 2022 is that correct good morning everyone let's uh, first off thank uh, Monsignor Walsh and uh, Deacon Rich for the beautiful celebration of the uh, mass today so let's give them a round of applause let's also uh, give a round of applause to our magical outstanding job today with our music and always, let's thank uh, Mrs. Malley and Ms. Reed for their outstanding job coordinating our, our mass. Just have a few brief slides to share with you this morning. I was actually going to start with a prayer, but I wanted to talk today about a couple things on leadership with the senior class. It's obviously, as we always hear, it's a big year, senior year. And I always like to think about beginning with the end in mind. You probably have heard that phrase before, beginning with the end in mind. So I'm thinking that you probably are aware, June 4th and June 5th. Who can tell me what's happening on June 4th and June 5th? A couple, just raise your hand. Don't be shy. Yes? No. Graduation, right. On June 5th, and baccalaureate mass on June 4th. And of course, I'm sure all of you are, I think May 21st is the senior prom. So all great events. But we're very close to getting to that ultimate goal, which is graduation. You've worked for, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You guys can hear me anyway, uh, four years now. 
So this is a big year, the culmination of all your time here at Notre Dame, beginning with the end in mind. And I have to say, of course, again, this year, we're faced with the challenge of the Delta variant, COVID-19. We'll talk about that, some of the challenges. But I, I have to say that from your teachers and staff here at Notre Dame, we have been amazed by your sense of strength and resiliency. And that's a great positive to you. And that speaks something to what I talk about in the terms of the core of being a leader and leadership. And I know you'll probably hear that a lot this year, but that's so important in senior year. I was thinking as Monsignor Walsh was talking today, a beautiful homily about building one another up, encouraging one another. I think about how so often in social media, it's exactly the opposite. It's all about tearing down. And I, it brought back a memory of my own high school, and I remember in my JV basketball team, and I can remember the leaders of that team were ones who were negative, discouraging. And it truly brought the collective team down. We were really good, talented. But you know what? It didn't matter. Because when crunch time came, that negativity got in the way. We didn't have leadership. We didn't have leaders. So Monsignor's message today was so powerful about encouraging one another as a senior class, encouraging others that you see on your teams and performing arts, and I'll talk about that in a few moments. So senior leadership, it's critical in this senior year, and that's demonstrated on that larger level of student government and National Honor Society. But let me tell you, it's more importantly in the hallways, it's in the classrooms, it's in the athletic fields, in the clubs, activities, and your performing arts. When you walk down that hallway, the way you wear your mask, the way you conduct yourself, the 237 freshmen that are coming through the doors in a couple of days will be looking to you. And that's true. So senior leadership. And let's build on Monsignor's message today because I think that that is, was an incredible message and powerful than anything I could say. You know, I, I think of leadership, I, uh, you might have seen this from last year. I, I love this from Dr. Seuss. I read Dr. Seuss still to my younger one. Why fit in when you're meant to stand out? Be a difference maker. Don't just follow the herd. All of you think about that as part of your challenge this year as senior leaders. Mrs. Barlow and I are counting on you as senior leaders, your leadership in every facet because they are looking for you. They're looking at you. Just a few things on some of the areas of change in the building that you may be seeing. You know, we have a new ND website. I would love to get your feedback uh, as seniors to the, to the new website. If you see me in the hallway, tell me, give me a thumbs up or down. I think you're going to hopefully like it. Uh, those of you, I think you've been, some of you have been on Nolan already, not only the new turf, but this summer we did the track. Uh, with, there's a new campus ministry wing, and I'll show that to you in a small picture in a second. Uh, I'm really excited about that. We, we wanted a space that's totally dedicated to students, where you can go, talk, reflect, have quiet, study, talk to the campus ministers. It's your space. Uh, we also put, as part of our initiative to go in green, being environmentally conscious, we have new solar panels, which you can't see, but they're up there, a whole array of them, uh, and also new LED lighting in the hallways. It's pretty bright right now, if you probably came in for the first time. And then we start the construction on the new soccer and lacrosse field. I'm sorry that you probably will not, as seniors, be able to enjoy that, but that construction will be done sometime in the early spring. So there it is. That's a, it's a pretty poor, I'm not a good photographer. I took this uh, last week, but this is that new campus ministry room. There are much better photos to take a look at that, but it's a, it is a beautiful space. And that's really from the generosity uh, of our donors, benefactors, and alumni, of which you're only one year removed from being in that category. So it just shows you that that sense of being an alumni, giving back is so important. Again, there's the, the, the array of solar panels on the roof going green. 
and there's the track. So we're really, really glad that you can enjoy some of these newer features. My last piece today is one is on, again, leadership, but the second on, you know, living the mission and these mercy values. You're going to hear a lot about that. As part of our new strategic plan, we put a greater emphasis on our foundation. We are a diocesan school, Catholic school, but we were founded by the Sisters of Mercy. When though we do not see the sisters here anymore, their presence what we might call their charism, their living spirit is still embedded here in the walls of Notre Dame High School all the way back in 1957 when the first six sisters arrived on this campus. So it's a school that's been founded by the Sisters of Mercy and those values, I would hope that by the time we get to June 5th and graduation day, if I see you in the Cure Arena, I could ask you, give me one of those Mercy Corps values. You could name at least two or three of those values, and more importantly, have lived them. So I'd ask you today, as you look at those, respect, integrity, compassion, service and justice, what value can you challenge yourself to live this year? What one of those mercy values? If you started here in the beginning, then you can go back and think about it at the end. So I'm asking the seniors in a very special way to do that. And of course, we always try to live the mission. And there's that one line in our mission statement that always comes alive for me. And that is the idea that we're here to educate young men and women to live their full potential. What better year for you to harness your full potential? Academically, challenge yourself in whatever area you need to see for improvement spiritually, emotionally, all those different areas and components of your life. I love to write them down. I, I'm a person, I, I, I like to write my goals down in a, in a journal and make sure each week I come to like a Sunday night and I put down my goals. It just helps me to focus. And I'm asking you to think about that statement in this year, this great year in your life. I always tell the story, I never thought, I never thought, when I was in your shoes, I was a very, very shy person. I was one of those students who was always in the back, very rarely raised their hand. And I regret that in some ways because I don't think I lived my full potential. Shyness, introversion. People laugh like, well, you're up there all the time talking now. And that was part of the development because I wanted to get better. I didn't want to settle for just that. So I ask you today, to think about what is it that you want to live your full potential this year. Stand out. Don't just walk with the herd. Be a leader. We need you. We can't, we're counting on you to be that leader. I'm not going to talk about the strategic plan, I, I think, but you, there, there were students who did participate in our strategic plan. We'll talk more about that in the year. And then, of course, St. Mother Teresa, one of my real heroes. I actually got a chance to meet her in the Bronx. And... Um, such an inspiring person, this tall, very tiny, and yet so great. And that's the model, I think, that we have to live by. We can do such great things, right? These small acts of kindness and love that we can do throughout that sometimes, then the best ones often are the ones that are not even seen, that people don't even get to see. Not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. One of my favorite quotes from Mother Teresa. So, just the final pieces here on the opening of the school. Mrs. Barlow is going to talk to you now in a few moments about this, but it's just a reminder that everything that we do here at Notre Dame is grounded in these principles, you know, trying to live the mission. All of our policies align with the, the health and safety protocols, you know, and we're trying to do our best as a school community. Our, our, our principal and our team and faculty did an amazing job last year, right, to keep that quality and continuity of learning going forward. Uh, and this year, we're trying to also make sure that we can increase that social connection because we know how important that is for all of you, for all of us as adults. Nothing is better than when we see you walking through that door. It's an empty shell this building in the summertime until you walk in through this door. We all need that social connection. And we all need to have flexibility. We need to have a willingness that sometimes we might have to shift and we move in this direction one day and we have that openness to the spirit and we still encourage, as Monsignor said today. 
So you're going to hear today about masking and vaccinations and quarantine in just a few moments. So I was supposed to introduce the mask, so that's why I put that in there. But my final reflection is on that, and that's the idea that every single day we pray for you. We really do. We pray for you as, as, as a senior class. We pray for the students of the school. Um, and we pray that you truly live up to that fullness of potential. So on behalf of everyone here, uh, our Board of Governors, we wish you uh, an outstanding senior year. Uh, we could not be more proud of you, the class of 2022. God bless. Okay, well good morning and welcome back seniors. How exciting. Um, President Jennings and I have a similar speech today, um, or I guess a theme to our speeches, um, and it's all about leadership. I'm gonna talk to you as the student leaders of this school. I'm gonna talk to you and ask you to spend the year leading by example. Today is a very special day. It's a very important day. As you were filing in here this morning, I flashed right to baccalaureate and graduation because that's how you'll be walking down these uh, aisles and coming in for one of your last masses here at Notre Dame. And it's going to happen before you know it. Like I tell your parents, I told them freshman year, it happens in a blink of an eye. Today, you're initiated as seniors. You are the leaders of the student body. You will be held to the highest standards. I'm expecting you to lead by example for the rest of the student body. I am calling upon you today to lead the juniors, the sophomores, and the freshman classes throughout this school year. Today, I want to tell you a little bit about what the day is going to be like. We're going to reorient you to our culture of health and safety and wellness for Notre Dame. I'm gonna talk about how some things have changed, how some things are back to normal, sort of, and how some other things are still in that flux uh, area. We'll discuss the current COVID protocols and what has changed since you left in June. You'll hear from Mrs. McIsaac and our new Dean of Students, Mr. Angelino. They'll review the handbook the dress code, masking rules and consequences. Mrs. Reed and Mrs. Malley are gonna take some time and speak to you about your Catholic identity, participating in liturgy and morning prayer, campus ministry and retreats. Dr. Engbertson, our service and diversity and inclusion coordinator, will remind you of those very important service requirements, discuss service opportunities, and review how to log in those hours. She will also speak to you about Notre Dame's diverse culture and echo our mantra that there is no place for hate here at Notre Dame. Mrs. Lenahan and Mrs. Magro will be discussing academic integrity. They'll review the Notre Dame Honor Code and offer smart alternatives to cheating. Much time and effort has been put into today, so I ask you to listen carefully, pay attention, ask questions, the way we start, just like last year, the way we start is gonna be vital to our success. Okay, let me get the microphone. Hmm. All right, I just talked about that we're back to normal, sort of. So we are back to normal. You're in uniform, which is so very exciting, isn't it? No more sweats, no more sneakers, tech, unless you're on that list, and we'll talk about that list in a minute. But we're back in uniform. Our classrooms are filled with chairs. We're back to full classrooms, like we were at the end of the year last year. 27 desks in a room. 
That room right there is B105. Remember that classroom of the future where it had the cool, um, it used to be the first aid room, I think, last year. That's back to normal. That's B105. And some of your teachers may book you into that room to have more of a, a discussion type lessons, more interactive type lessons. The cafeteria, what's missing from those tables? Plexiglass. Really excited. The plexiglass is down, which is awesome, right? Because it's all about being able, like President Jennings said, being able to connect, being able to hear, being able to talk. And in the cafeteria, the plexiglass is down, as well as the library and different spaces. But some things haven't changed. So the wipes are still there for you when you walk into your classrooms to wipe down your desks. We still have signs. Social distancing is still important. Washing your hands and uh, using that hand sanitizer is still important and of course masks. These are some, well the tent's still there and we'll still be able to have the tent. The tent is here all the way through right now. At this point we have it rented through uh, up to Thanksgiving. Uh, so that's still gonna be a place for you to eat and I'll speak to that in a minute. Um, and now we have this new thing happening, uh, uh, a QR code and a Google form, and I'll speak to it in a few minutes, but those are some new things we put in place that will help me contact Trace. Just for your information, you know, school sort of started today because you're the first group of students in, but we know athletics has started already. So far, I've had to quarantine two athletic teams. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it because it's hard, it's a pain, I don't want anybody to have COVID, I don't want anybody to miss out on anything, but I just don't want to do it because I want to keep you here, I want to keep you in school, and I want to keep things as normal as they can. So by following the rules, by listening to me, and doing things correctly and, and um, properly, I hope that I will not have to do any more quarantining for the rest of this school year. Okay, so we're transitioning back to normal. And the masks are still here. So, based on Governor Murphy's Executive Order 251, masks are mandated in all New Jersey public, private, and parochial schools. We're a parochial school. Until further notice, masks must be a solid color, and you guys look really good. You're all, I think, pretty much a solid color and they must be worn correctly over your nose and mouth. You may remove masks when you're outside. So if you're out at that tent eating lunch, you can remove your masks. You walk out those doors and you're walking to your cars, you can remove your masks. You're watching a sporting event, no masks outside. Inside, on, properly, all the time unless when you're eating. So if you're in the cafeteria, you can remove those masks to eat, then put them back up when you're finished. Close contact and quarantining. I'm gonna read you the rules that I have to follow that the New Jersey Department of Health, that the Lawrence Township Department of Health mandate that I follow. These aren't my rules. I did not make them up. I just have to execute them. The diocese is asking me to do so, as well as those two departments of health. So, in the K-12 indoor classroom setting, close contact excludes students who are within three to six feet of an infected student. Where both the infected students, this is the most important part, where the infected student, the COVID positive patient, and the exposed student correctly and consistently wear well-fitting masks the entire time. If I cannot prove or be assured that your mask was on properly and well-fitting, you might be quarantined. That's why the masks are so important. They were important last year, of course, right? But they're super important this year because it all connects to how I quarantine people. So keeping that mask on properly over your nose and mouth will help you not to be put out, will help you not to be quarantined. 
wearing your mask properly indoors at all times, stay three feet apart from each other, I won't have to quarantine. So think about that. Make sure that you're three feet. Our, our classroom desks are three feet apart. Um, there are certain places, however, where you're not gonna be three feet apart. And I'll explain that in a minute. Now, close contact outdoors. Indoors, I'm talking about three feet. Outdoors, I'm still talking about six feet. So if you're around a COVID positive case and you've been within six feet of that person for 15 minutes over a 24 hour period, I'd have to quarantine you, all right? So it's the six feet outside, it's the three feet inside. Inside, masks, masks, masks. So I'm gonna go over what happens if you are COVID positive or what happens if you're exposed and there's sort of some new rules to that as well. Let me see if I have, um... so COVID positive. I get a phone call or you, the nurse says, or we figure out that you're COVID positive. You have to isolate at home, isolate in your bedroom or in the basement or wherever you're choosing to isolate for 10 days from the onset of the symptoms. You could return to school and co-curricular activities after 10 days of isolation and no symptoms. Now, if you're exposed and not vaccinated, exposed and not fully vaccinated, and fully vaccinated means that it's been two weeks since your second shot, or two weeks after your first shot if you have the J&J. &J. Most kids are getting the Pfizer. I think that's the one that's approved for you. So exposed and not vaccinated, you have to isolate I'm sorry, quarantine. You have to quarantine for 10 days. You can get a test on the fifth to seventh day after exposure, and if you have no symptoms and you get this negative test, you could return to school. So non-vaxxed, you have to quarantine for 10 days. If you're exposed and vaccinated and you have no symptoms, you don't need to quarantine. You could still come to school every day. So if you're vaccinated and you're exposed, you can come to school every day. But they're saying you must wear your mask indoors for 14 days. Well, that's not hard at school because you have to wear that mask at school indoors. But when you're home and you've been exposed and you're vaccinated, you need to wear that mask. You're going to the grocery store or running into Wawa, you need to wear that mask for 14 days. Exposed and vaxxed, exposed and vaxxed, you, it's recommended that you get tested three to five days after the exposure. If it's negative, you still continue to come to school. Obviously, if it's positive, everything changes. If it's positive, you go back to being isolated for 10 days. So, do you see why it's really important, if you're vaccinated, that we get those cards? It's so important that I have a copy, that Nurse Jill Gordon has a copy of your vaccination cards, because then I can avoid sending you that letter home that says, you have to stay home. Avoid annoying you, because in your head, I'm already vaccinated. Why is she sending me this? I'm vaccinated. I'm sending it to you because I don't have a record of your card. So it is imperative imperative if you are vaccinated that you submit that card to Nurse Gordon. It will help me unnecessarily quarantine you. And remember, these are all the rules of the Lawrence Township Department of Health, of the New Jersey Department of Health. These are rules I have to follow. I didn't make them up. I'm not that smart. Don't know how to do it. I didn't go to school to be a scientist. All right. These are the rules of the Lawrence Department of Health, and these are the rules that I must follow. All right, activity period, activity lunch, lunch in the student center, in the library, and activity period at classrooms. So before I showed you that QR code and a, and a Google form came up, sort of like you had a Google form for attendance today, every time you eat in the cafeteria, or in the library, you need to take out your phone and you need to 
go onto the QR code, just like when you go to, um, out to a restaurant through COVID and you bring the menu up through that QR code, when you go to uh, the cafeteria, you'll see a sticker on each table. And it might say, here, I'll show you. So I chose to sit at cafeteria one, table one. I have to take that QR code and fill out this Google form right here. All right, it's gonna ask you your first name, your last name, your table number, and that's how I'll know where you're seated for contact tracing. So, if, uh, if, if I, uh, okay, I'll use Owen Barlow as an example. Owen Barlow chose to sit at table number one, and I find out that Owen is positive. I have to look at all the people that were sitting at his table during activity period or during his lunch period. And all of those people are now exposed because your masks are off. We've put eight chairs at a table, I think. So if I have eight kids, that's not three feet apart and your masks are down. So those people have all been exposed, okay? So then I have to go and I have to send a nice little, I have to check first how many of the kids at the table are vaccinated. Oh, I only have four cards. So now there's four other people that I'm assuming have been exposed that are not vax and they have to stay home. So Owen positive, he has to stay home. The four kids that I don't have the vax cards for, because I'm assuming they're not vaccinated, they have to stay home. And then the others, I'll let them know they're exposed, but they could still come to school. So this form and doing this, anytime you are in the cafeteria eating at a table where people have their masks down, I need it, I need that done every day. If you choose to eat in the library, it's gonna be the same situation. Okay, there's gonna be a, cafe, a library table number. Scan it, put your name in, and then I'll know where you are, and that helps me contact trace. So I told you that the tent is open for lunch. It's, you don't have to do tables at lunch because you could take your masks down at the tent. So there's no tables to scan. There are tables out there, but you don't have to scan. We are four people at a table out in the tent, just like we were last year. There's room for 120 of you. So go eat outside, and you have a less chance of being quarantined. So eating is allowed in the cafeteria. It's allowed in the tent outside. It's allowed in the library. It is also allowed in the classrooms if the teachers permit it. So some teachers might say, come on in. Remember back in the day in 2019, we could eat in classrooms during activity period? You're able to do it again, but there are some rules in the classroom. The first rule is, is you have to sit six feet apart from one another. You can't be close. You have to sit six feet apart. They will only let in about 15 kids at the max so they could separate you out by six feet. I ask if you do eat in the classroom that you quickly eat, whatever you brought with you, your sandwich, your wrap, whatever, put that mask up when you're done. But you can do it as long as the teacher permits it, and it's up to the teacher. Our e-hall pass is continuing. That's how you're gonna be able to go to the bathroom, go to guidance, wherever, so you're still gonna uh, do e-hall e pass. I believe Mrs. McIsaac or Mr. Angelina will talk to you a little bit about that and refresh your memory on that, but that's how you're able to travel through this building and we'll be able to see where you are. There is no more our school. I know. However, I'm trusting you. I'm trusting your parents, because I'll be talking to your parents. I'm trusting every faculty, every staff member. You are all expected to monitor your health each day. You should stay home, contact the nurse and the attendance office if you have at least two of these symptoms. If you have a fever, chills, shivers, muscle aches, headaches, sore throat, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, fatigue, congestion, or runny nose. If you have two of those symptoms, you should stay home. As a matter of fact, I have to say, if you have a cough, you have a sore throat, you have a runny nose, stay home. 
stay home. Because I, what I'm finding out with the cases that I've been seeing, uh, I had a little bit of a scratchy th throat. Then I lost my taste and smell. Well, that's too late. I had a runny nose, a little stuffy nose. And then I lost my taste and smell. Too late. Okay? So if you're feeling sick, if you're just feeling off, stay home. Take a sick day. Don't spread this around here. If you have one of the following symptoms, stay home. Cough, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, can't smell or can't taste. Don't come to school. Call the nurse's office. Go to your doctor. Get a COVID test. Hygiene. We're going to continue to remind you through signage, like you saw before, and conversation to wash your hands. Wash your hands. Keep them clean. Keep your hands away from your nose, from your mouth. Use hand sanitizer. It's still available throughout the schools and the, throughout the school and in the classrooms. You are required to wipe down your desks. When you get to the class, take one of the wipes, wipe down the desk, throw it away just like you did last year. And those wipes are available in every classroom. Our locker rooms are open. So you're going to change. But you're going to do it quickly. It's not a place to sit around, hang out, uh, talk to one another, change, get into your gym uniform, get out there, do gym, go back in and quickly change, get to your next class. I don't want to have to shut down the locker rooms. So the one-way hallway signs, the staggered bells where we kept hearing Mrs. McIsaac's voice, the plexiglass, the cohorts, the health screening form, they are no longer here. Very exciting, right? Back to normal, getting back to normal. The reason why they're no longer here is because everybody has had the opportunity to get vaccinated. That's an added layer. So there's an added layer of protection with us. That's why if you're vaxxed, you don't have to quarantine. So while I'm taking away things, a few things were put in place. So that was why I was able to do that. Okay. Now I'm, talk I'm not talking about COVID anymore. Now I'm talking about posting. And I'm really serious about this because this gets you in trouble, big time trouble. What you post lasts a lifetime. It does. It doesn't go away. Trust me. Even something that you may have posted three years ago, it's still out there. And if someone doesn't like you, they'll find it and they'll spread it around again. Be very, very careful. A mistake, a lapse in moral judgment can quickly ruin your life. Before posting about anything, think of these three rules. Would you be comfortable with me seeing what you have there? What you put on TikTok or what you put on Snapchat? Is it okay for Mrs. Barlow to see it? What about your future boss? What about the colleges that are looking at you? Because they look, trust me. When you're at that party and you're holding that beer, or somebody behind you is holding it, or the person next to you has something that you shouldn't be having, they could see it. And, and I'm telling you, people who want to get to you, who are mad at you, will make sure that they see it. Would you be okay with your grandmother or grandfather seeing what you're posted? Can someone who doesn't like you use it against you? Harassment, intimidation, bullying will not be tolerated as they are contrary to the mission of Notre Dame. There's all forms of harassment, intimidation, and bullying. If someone you know is using social media to humiliate, to threaten, to publicly shame someone, if you overhear someone making threats, racial slurs, or jokes, please lead by example. Lead by example. Be an upstander. Tell your teachers, tell a coach, tell the administration, tell your parents, tell a trusted adult. Please, 
It'll save you a lot of headache. It'll save the person a lot of headache. And hopefully we can squash it. And I need you to lead by example. I don't want to... I think you were here a few years back when I had to call this entire school into this room and talk about this specifically. You may have been freshmen at the time, okay? So listen to me, I don't want to do it. And it's very easy to not do it if you guys think, think before you put anything out there. The success of this school year is in your hands. I want you to be safe. I want you to be smart. I want, we did it last year. We're going to do it this year. We're going to do it every year. It is going to be an awesome year for you. Just follow the rules. And I do truly want you to have a great senior year. Enjoy it. Like President Jennings said, soak it up. Take risks, good risks. Put yourself out there. Um, I want to thank everybody. Anybody have any questions about any of the rules or things that are going on in the school this year? All right. Mrs. McIsaac, I think we may be ahead of schedule. But uh, Mrs. McIsaac is going to come up and tell you what our next steps are, what we're going to do next. Thank you. How much ahead of schedule are we? Yeah, 20 minutes. It's okay. They'll just have extra time for lunch. Okay. So good morning again and welcome back. I am missing some people for attendance. I do think some people are not here, so that might be the case. But when we go to the cafeteria, we'll be looking for people. Our next step this morning is um, lunch slash really breakfast. This is the last time you'll have to eat today. And we'll be there. You're going to get about an extra 10 or 12 minutes, which is awesome. You can sit in the student center. If you sit in the student center, sign in with the form. If you want to go out back to the tent, you can just use B hallway to go out back to the tent. Following that, a bell will ring and then everybody is going to come back here to the auditorium. We're going to have one last whole group presentation, and then we're going to divide up into groups of four different groups. So when you come back for the next presentation, we'll hand out some of those bracelets like they do at ICANN days, and that will indicate your group. So your color is your group. So if you want to be with somebody specifically, when you come back, get the same color bracelet as them. All right. So again, we're going to go for lunch. Stop now. We're going to go a little bit. This group here can go. And the far left, the center's going to stay. The far left can go. Okay, and the center group can go. You can use both aisles. Thank you.